has evolved here in the last little bit. You know, you can just see whenever they're singing their songs how much they love Jesus. And that blesses my heart, and I know heaven is being blessed, and I know Jesus is probably standing up whenever they're singing to him. Because it's heavenly. It's good. You know, I am a Jesus man. I, I mean, I'm all about the, the birth, the burial, the death, and the resurrection, and the new Jerusalem coming down. That's what I'm all about. So <laughs> the Lord took me in a different direction this morning as we faced the new year. And, uh, you know, he tells us that we'll live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He also tells us that, uh, that we're to live by the whole counsel of God. So um, I... I'm going, I'm going to the book of Proverbs this morning. And let me tell you about a young lady in our congregation. About three years ago, she got a hold of the book of Proverbs. And every time you seen her or heard from her, you could tell God was working in her life through the book of Proverbs. This is a book of instruction on how to live your life, how to conduct yourselves in this world. And she... And you could tell God was hand-feeding her. Because every time you seen her, she was talking about the book of Proverbs. And God at work in her life. Now, we just came through Christmas. We just came through the time of birth of our Savior. And I didn't hear a whole lot about it. And to me, you can't have a resurrection unless there's a birth. And we've got to understand that the Son of God had all glory, and he laid it down, and he all, the, the brightest jewel of heaven coming down to earth, taking on the form of a sinful man, he left all that for you and I. Amen. And you know what he came for? He came for sin. That is what he came for. Thank God he got it. Amen. Praise God he got it. And he came to seek and save that which was lost. So to me, the birth is important because without it, there wouldn't have been a resurrection. And all that he laid down, and he came down here and they spat on him. And they kicked him. And they beat him. And he laid all that down because he loved you and I. You know? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, so I do honor his birth. And I do celebrate his birth. You don't have to throw a lot of this commercialism in it, but you need to recognize it. Amen. Amen. Uh, tell you what we're going to do. You know, when God gave me this, Romans, I mean, uh, Proverbs chapter 2, I told him, I said, Lord, I mean, I'm out of my comfort zone. <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm not sure I can do this. And I said, if this thing falls apart, it's your fault. <laughs> because, because I really don't care anything about talking about what we can fix to talk about. But he never did say nothing else to me. <laughs> so here I am. You know, here I am. Well, if we don't... You know, let's go to the book of Proverbs, if we will. Proverbs. I'm not like Dwayne. I don't have a, something to help me. I can flip through real fast up here. <laughs> Above all else, get what? Let's see how many Bible scholars we got here. Above all else, get what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Above everything else, get wisdom. Chapter 2, Proverbs. Stand up for the reading of the Lord's Word. He is King of Kings. And this is the King's Word right here. Chapter 2, and we're going to read from 1 through about 8. My son, 
if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with you, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. And find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment. And preserves the way of his saints. You may be seated. My son. Oh, hallelujah. That's enough for me right there. <laughs> my son. My daughter. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's enough. I, I, could, I, could, I could start shouting and run around these pews with him saying, my son. <laughs> that means more to me than anything else in this universe. That I am a child of God. By His grace. And his mercy. And because of this. Hallelujah. My son. If thou wilt receive my words. You know God is a gentleman. He doesn't force. He's not a bully. He's not going to force anything on you. Unless you want it. If you will receive my words, and hide my commandment with thee. That you love one another as I have loved you. The law of love. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Where that joy? And he had the love of the Father in him. And he loved the Father. He said, you love me and you love each other like I have loved you when I went to the cross for you. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. That you have love one for another. He's not going to force his way on you and I. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Now, if you love him and you knew he gave his life for you, there's going to be some sorrowfulness in you because of what he went through for you and I. I know when I got saved, I must have cried for a month. Because I didn't have anybody that loved me enough that would give their life for me. Nobody. And the Son of God coming down here for me. And if you'd have been the only one on planet earth, he would have come for you. What grace, what mercy. That he shows us. Verse 2. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. Let's take a look at wisdom. Let's, if you'll flip over to chapter 4, verse 5. We're going to get a scriptural look at, at wisdom. And if you're there, he says, get wisdom. He tells you and I to get wisdom. It's not an option. If you're going to live a successful life down here on planet earth and do anything for Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God, you're going to have to operate from wisdom. His wisdom. 
Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. Neither de decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. Listen, he's talking about wisdom as being a lady. Lady wisdom. Lady wisdom. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve you. Love her. This is powerful, folks. This is what's going to get you and I through this time of turmoil in the earth right now is wisdom. Love her, and she shall keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. <laughs> Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get wisdom understanding you know wisdom will allow you to rightly divide the word of truth so if you can rightly divide the word of truth you can what wrongly divide the word of truth now I'm going to share with you just for a second about about what I'm talking about years ago I had a neighbor that I think he hated me <laughs> Because every time I seen him, he was bringing me trouble. And, 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 and I know what the Bible says, to love thy neighbor as thyself. And I kept trying to love this man. But every time I seen him, it was something that would hurt me. Well, I also read in Proverbs where it says, The prudent man seeth evil comes, and he steps aside. Now, listen to me. Rightly dividing the word of truth. This scripture is spiritually discerned. If you don't understand it with your head, you understand it and discern it with your what? Your heart. With your spirit. So it will help you in that endeavor that, that God will reveal scripture to you that you need in whatever area of your life that you're having a problem with. Well... I didn't get around the man anymore. I didn't have any more problem with him. <laughs> Praise God. You know, if it's going to hurt you, then and, and, and you've went for a while and it's not happening the way that, that you think it should, then step aside. Don't let it continue hurting you. All right. Verse 8. I'm going to read down about verse 13 because this is all about wisdom. Exalt her. Lift her up. Lift her up. And she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory she shall deliver to you. Hear, O my son, <laughs> receive my sayings in the years of thy life shall be many. Now listen, <laughs> we spend an awful lot of money on, on health care. We spend an awful lot of money trying to live longer, especially when we get a little older. Uh, but God says, He said, get wisdom. And she, wisdom, she will prolong your life. Because there's so many things out here. We got, we got Christians bumping into walls and Running off cliffs and, and falling down. When all they got to do is have wisdom. And that's not going to happen. Because he will give you the ability to navigate down here where the God of this world is Satan. And you're a stranger here. This is not your home. So we have trouble in this world. And if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. So we're down here, and, and we're going to get wisdom because that's going to help us get through many trying times. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened or hindered and when thou runnest you're not going to stumble take fast hold of instruction let her not go 
keep her, for she is thy life. She is thy life. The devil would have killed you 30 years ago if he could have. <laughs> but God's kept you, and God is, God is raising you up to work in his kingdom, and you're going to have to have wisdom to do that. You're going to have to have it. There ain't no way around it. Flip back over. Verse 2. Incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. It's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. Open up the halls of your heart. Open up the walls of your heart and let God start putting His wisdom in there. His understanding. His commandments. Apply thy heart to understanding. Let's go to Jeremiah 22. Let's see if I can find it. Jeremiah 22. No, let's don't do that. Jeremiah 33, verse 12. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. <laughs> he says, and this is God talking to us. He says, call unto me, and I'll answer you. And show the great and mighty things that you don't know. If you're just religious, you're going to dry up and blow away. That's what's going to happen to you. If you're just religious. You know one thing I've seen that's missing in the church, and I've been, in, I've, <laughs> I've been saved a lot longer than most of you have been born. Uh, my walk with God, I've never doubted God. I've never looked back when He saved my soul. This is a journey that him and I is on. And he's going to see me all the way to glory. And I've never wanted to change anything with my walk with God. That's how good and wonderful he's been to me in this life. And I've had my troubles. Oh, and some of you have heard about them. But, you know, I've had my troubles. But call upon him. <clears throat> call upon him. Verse 3 says, yeah, if thou criest after knowledge, cry out to God. Get radical in your attempt to find God. Yeah. When you search for God with all your heart, mind, and soul, guess what? You're going to find Him. He said, he said you would. This is not a cheap salvation. This is serious business. Don't just be religious. This is a relationship with a living God. And He indwells your spirit. You are a three-part being. I am a spirit. I live in a body and I possess a mind or a soul. We're a three-part being. So, you know, we've got to get to the point to where we radically chase God. Ever since you've been born, the Holy Spirit has been chasing you. It's called provenient grace. It come out of Methodism. But it's convenient grace where God has been after you to bring you to the knowledge of the cross that you'll either accept Jesus Christ or you reject Him. And the mission of the devil has been to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. He's been trying to kill you ever since you've been born. So that you'll never reach the point where you have to make a decision for Christ. <laughs> This is serious business. And you and I need to get radical in our chase and our love for Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you, there ain't going to be no sinners in heaven. No. I, and, and if you look around, you start, God will start showing you folks. And, and these, these people that's got all this anger and all this darkness inside them, they're not going to heaven. 
That's why you got to be born again. You are not heaven material. You can't fit into heaven. This, this old carnal self can't get into heaven. You must be born again. Because God, when He comes in and seals you with the Holy Spirit to the day of redemption, He is working in you. And then you're being changed day by day into who? Into the likeness of Christ. That makes us heaven worthy <laughs> right there. You know, that gets rid of the darkness. That gets rid of the hate and the pain and the anger that a lot of us have. You're going to have to get radical with Jesus. All right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> no, I won't say that. I've heard Dwayne say it so many times. <laughs> oh, all right. If thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, chase God. Get louder and louder. I remember one time in the darkest times of my life, I've got a communion table at home. I think that's one of the most powerful ordinances in the New Testament is communion. I've got my own communion table. And I remember I was going through the darkest time in my life and I had had communion, and I laid down on the floor, and I was crying. I was about to raise the roof on my house. That I was crying so loud for God. Lord God, help me. Help me. And He did. <laughs> and He did. And I'm still here. The devil been trying to kill me so many years, but he's he not able to because of whom I belong to. Is, is, you don't have the devil and God. You've got God. So God is ultimately in control of everything. Amen. All right. If thou seeketh her, talking about wisdom, as silver and searchest for her as hid treasure. You know, we've got folks that will go out here and spend every bit of penny they got in savings, sell their houses to go somewhere in the Caribbean looking for a hidden treasure. I mean, they got zeal. And they, know, they know what, they don't know exactly what they're looking for, but they're looking. And they put everything they have into that. And God says, if you'll do that, if you'll put that much effort, like the folks that go out here that seek silver and searches for the hidden treasures. He says, if you'll do that, <laughs> if you'll do that, then you're going to understand the fear of the Lord. A lot of people don't like to talk about the fear of the Lord. But it's the beginning of wisdom. I'll share something with you. <laughs> I've been saved about two years. I... I I had MS, and a lot of you heard my testimony. And they had me dying in a couple of years. They processed me out of the military, and uh, and miraculously, I had found a book. This book <clears throat> on a bridge in northern Maine when I was out hunting, <clears throat> and in a place where nobody lived, up in the mountains. And I took that book home, and within the pages of that book, I found Jesus. And he radically healed me and saved me. It took me five months to get through that book. And by the time I got through it, MS was gone. Because he said, my words are spirit and they're life. And I got so full of the life of God and the spirit of God, it destroyed the enemy's attempt to destroy me. That's the power of the Word of God. Amen. Well, I had, me and Jesus, I mean, we were close. We still are. But I didn't know, I knew that book was true. <clears throat> and everything I read in it, I mixed it with faith. Because you've got to do that. That book was more true than, than anything else. Well... <clears throat> But I had never been in the manifested presence of God. I'd never been in his presence in a way that was supernatural. <clears throat> well, I was stationed in northern Maine, and there was a, 
there was an evangelist holding a, an evangelistic meeting in Maryland. <laughs> and I went from Maine to Maryland to, to go to this evangelistic meeting. And he was a powerful man of God. And he had called, he had called everybody that needed prayer for healing to come up front. I sat in the back row. Well, I was sitting back there, and uh, I never will forget it. I mean, it, it's eternally etched in my spirit. I was sitting back there, and they started playing hallelujah. And all of a sudden, this, this, this presence came inside me, and, it, and I, it blowed up my chest. It popped my head, and my hands went straight up in the air. And I was scared <laughs> because I'd never been in a situation like that. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. I was scared. I was in, I was in an area I'd never been before. But I knew it was God. I knew it was God. I was in the presence of a holy God and I couldn't put my hands down. And there was such power coming out of these. I could have shot down an airplane. <laughs> there was so much radiation, the energy of God coming out of my hands. And of course, God putting all, you know, he's bringing scripture to remembrance. You shall lay hands on the sick. And, you know, I, I, I knew what was coming out of my hands. Well, <laughs> I had never been in that situation, and I was scared. I had a fear. You know, the Bible says fear of the one that has the power to destroy both the soul and the body. The one who gives us breath right now. Respect him. He's God. Respect the office of God. This whole world is in, in motion right now because, because he speaks it into existence. The world is held in store by his word, the Bible says. If there's going to be a tomorrow, he's going to speak it into existence. And guess who's his child? My son, my daughter, we're going to be all right. All right. The only thing we fear, we have a fear of God because of who he is. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So I've got a whole bunch of love in with that fear. That love of Christ is overpowers the fear. But I have a fear of God. So that is the beginning of wisdom. He says, and if you'll do that, you'll understand the fear of the Lord. This is not, this is serious. This is not some religious haphazard thing. Come to church once a week, go home and run into trouble and you open up the Bible and say, God's going to show me something here. No. He wants you to live hand in hand in an intimate relationship with Him. That's what he desires. And if you do anything less, you need to revisit the cross and what he did for you and I. Oh, such power, such glory. <laughs> and he says, And thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. This book is the knowledge of God. And you'll find it because He's given you wisdom. He's given you wisdom. This book is spiritually discerned with your heart. And only the Holy Spirit can reveal this Word to you. And, there's, there's, and you've, you've done it many times. Open up the book. Well, that verse means a little different than means something a little different than it did last time. Because it's spiritually discerned. Whatever you need in your life, He can take that Word and make it come alive unto you. Yeah. Amen. He has the power to do that. Oh, we have just scratched the surface of our walk with God. You know, we've just scratched that surface. It says here, 
In verse 7, he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Sound wisdom. There is an earthly wisdom, and it's sensual, and it's devilish, and it's sinful. But there is a sound wisdom that comes from Almighty God. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. You know what a buckler is? That's King James. Anybody know what a buckler is? It is a shield that's about that big around that goes on your arm for hand-to-hand combat. <laughs> that's what that is. Because guess what? You're going into battle. When God gets you equipped, you're going into battle. Because we're in a war. Amen. We're in a war. And He's given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness and power. You know? Hmm. He keepeth the paths of judgment. You know? We talked about it Wednesday night. We had a good service Wednesday night. Um, I'm getting to get up here a little bit with, with Brother Dwayne going through the what he's going through, but um, we talked about who shall lay charge against God's elect. Now, now get a hold of this, what I'm fixing to say. All judgment has been delivered into the hands of Jesus. All judgment. Now, <laughs> If he's going to be my judge, he's also my what? My Savior. Who can bring charge against me? He has both offices. He's the Savior and he's the judge. Who says that his power is not enough to save me? You can rest in the fact that you're secure in your salvation in Christ Jesus. As long as you don't push God away. It comes to the point that if you push God away, say, Holy Spirit, leave me alone. I don't want you to bother me anymore. I believe you're going to lose your salvation. But otherwise, I think you're secure in it. You're secure in it. How many times can you be born in the flesh? You'd be born once. I think it's the same way in the Spirit. Until you get to the point that you push God away. I think you lose it then. But I don't believe that's going to happen. Once you've tasted the goodness of God, you don't want, you don't want to lose that. Amen. And preserves the way of his saints. God is in the protection business. He's going to protect you and I. He's going to preserve us. Yeah, we're going through tough times. That's all part of, of the trials of, of faith that we have. It worketh, it worketh great, great and mighty things in our lives whenever we persevere in faith through a trial. I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I could go on, we could go, we could be here all afternoon. God is so good, and he's, he's got so much wisdom that he wants to impart upon us. Now, I want to share one more thing with you. Uh, it's important. Yeah, but I'm not going to go to it, but in John it says, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. <laughs> well, I, I think it's probably important enough, let's read it. Let's go to John. Let's see if I find it here. Y'all bear with me. John 10, verse 27 through 29. And he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Oh, thank God. <laughs> my sheep hear. It was, we started out with my son. But now God's built a family. We, there's a herd of us, all right? There's a herd of us. He says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. Oh, 
Let, let verse 28 and 29 soak in right now. And I give unto them eternal life. You got life right now. He that hath the Son hath what? Life. You got, it's not something you're going to get in the future. You got it right now. If, if a tornado come there and blow this thing all to pieces, you know what? Be after in the bodies, beware. Present with the Lord. <laughs> we are secure in Christ. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall what? Never perish. Man. <laughs> Why are you so fearful? If He has given you eternal life, and He tells you that you will never perish. Now I know, I know, in this physical world, this is all we know. I understand that, you know. A lot of times we want God with skin on to come to us. And God does that through people. He does that through His disciples. But the Bible says the things that are seen are made from things unseen. The things that are seen are made from things unseen. Jesus Christ should be more real to you than this podium is because the things that are seen are made from things unseen. And he said, Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, our Father, our Father, which gave them to me, Jesus is saying, is greater than all. And no man shall be able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this little illustration. Uh, my sheep hear my voice. If I, just, if I just had somebody, if I had a lady that was married to come up here, and I'm not going to do it because it takes too much time. But let's just say that I had Jennifer to come up here. And Jennifer was standing here <clears throat> with her back to the audience. <clears throat> and let's say I had five or six people, men, to come up and stand behind her. And each one of them would say, Jennifer, come this way. Do you think that she would be able to pick out Brian's voice? Yeah, glory. Get a hold of this. Why? They cohabitate. They love each other. They live with each other. They, they want to please each other. That's the same way with Jesus. My sheep hear my voice. You're not going to be able to hear the voice of God unless you get into an intimate relationship with Him. And you read this book and you pray continually, you love Him more than anything. You love Him more than anything, anybody. <clears throat> you love Him more than Grandma or Grandpa. God's good, isn't He? Oh, hallelujah. Well, I, I got out of my comfort zone, but God used it anyway. <laughs> what we're going to do next, we're going we're gonna to have communion. This is the most powerful ordinance in the New Testament. This is the most powerful thing that you can do that God has ordained for us to do. My cancer was 1% of the most dangerous cancers in the world. And I broke bread every night for a year. Because I discerned the Lord's blood and the Lord's body. And he, I'm still here. So if you don't have a communion table, I think it's posted on our church website, get you one made. Just you and Jesus and the Word of God. Now I'm going to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And uh, what we're going to do, if I could have a couple of the deacons come up here. And we're going to serve our worship team. Now, I've got to say something about this worship team. <laughs> I love them dearly. I mean, they, they, they sing to Jesus every Sunday, and it blesses my heart, and I know it blesses your heart. We're going to let them come through first. And... Uh, 
And then they're going to probably sing or play something or whatever they want to do. So if, uh, if y'all start from the back and just kind of, you know the routine, you know the drill. Start back there and just come on around here. We're going to start the new year. Worship team, you come first. We're going to start the new year in His presence with the Lord's Supper, with communion. Now I'm going to read from... Hallelujah. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 